everyone, I hope you're really well. For today's video, I'm gonna be doing a first impressions swatch and review type video. I don't do these very often, but when something gets me excited, I just wanna share it straight away. So today I'm talking about the new Retro Matte Liquid Lipsticks from MAC. They look like this. And I spotted these in store before I went skiing, and I thought, oh, those are, those are interesting. I wasn't really sure that they were new, and then I kind of went away and did some searching on YouTube, realized they were brand new. My store actually put them out early and I was so gutted I didn't get them. I checked in the airport on the way to France and they didn't have any. So the entire holiday I spent thinking about these and obsessing over them and watching every review on YouTube. So the minute I got home, I went straight to Fenix, MAC, and I bought five colors. So I only picked these up yesterday. I've been trying them. I tried them a bit last night and I've been trying them today. I've literally just swatched every single color that I own, so apologies if my lips look a little bit beaten up. But I'm gonna talk you guys through what I think so far and a little bit about the products. So this is what they look like. I really like the packaging personally. There's been a lot of split opinions on the packaging. Some people absolutely hate it. I really like it. I really like the size and chunkiness of it. I think it's cute that they've kept the MAC lipstick lid. I agree it kind of looks a little bit out of place, but I really like it. And I like that you can see the color of the lipstick inside. Comparing the packaging to my two other favorite liquid lipsticks, which I'm gonna to refer to a lot in this video. This is the Kat Von D Everlasting Lipstick and this is the Sephora Lip Cream. The Kat Von D one I find far too long. The wand is too long for like a precise application, although I love this lipstick. And the Sephora Lip Cream is okay, but I mean, nothing special really. So let me talk about the actual application wand. I really like the MAC one. It's a sort of diamond shape, which makes it really easy for when you're applying it and getting right to the edges, because I find that the the tip on this is really good for the corners and the edges. I say it's the best tip compared to the other two. The Kat Von D one is just a doe foot applicator and as I said, I find it far too long. And the Sephora Lip Cream is also a doe foot. It's quite large, so it can get a little bit messy. The Kat Von D Everlasting Lipsticks are $20, which is about 13 pounds. You can't actually get these in the UK yet. And the Sephora Lip Creams are $14, so that's a bit more affordable at around nine pounds. Again, you can't get these in the UK yet. Hourglass Opaque Rouge are 23 pounds, so those are a bit more similar to the MAC ones. I really don't like those though I find them so drying so much I actually got rid of all of mine because I found it uncomfortable to wear and the MAC ones come at 21 pounds so I think that's quite expensive I would have preferred this to be around the 15 pound range as you can see I bought quite a lot and it came to so much money I wanted to buy them so I could do this video but I think in the real world, I wouldn't buy more than like one or two maybe because it's just, that's really expensive. They come in 15 shades, which is quite nice. I think it's a decent amount. I hope that they add more in the future. I don't know if they will. I think it is missing a few key shades. So I picked up five, pretty much all the ones I wanted. Apart from there was a really nude one, I can't remember what it's called, that I really wanted. They didn't have it, they had the more peachy nude, so I got that instead. I'm gonna talk you through each shade and how they felt when I applied them and show you some cutaways of what they look like on. So the first one is Back in Vogue and this is one of the nude shades that they have. It's a slightly more peachy one. I don't think this suits me that well, but it's nice to wear. I found that one pump did your entire lips. You didn't have to keep pumping it back in. And this one sets very quickly and it's a really good everyday nude. I find that wearing nude creamy lipsticks just rub off really quickly. So it's nice to have something matte and nude. And this shade didn't go blotchy. I didn't have to blot it. It just applied really smoothly and nicely. The next shade is quite the standout. And this is one of the more orangey reds. Orangey reds don't usually suit me that much, I find, because I'm so dark. I do quite like this one. I did find that as soon as I applied it, it was quite drying and cracking. It showed a lot of fine lines on my lips. So if you do have very dry lips with lots of fine lines, these probably won't be good for you. I definitely find these more drying than the Kat Von D and the Sephora lip creams. But I also find that they set much quicker. I say between like 10, 15 seconds and they're completely set. So set that you can take your hand swipe it across your mouth and I'm not joking, nothing will move. So if you're after that long lasting formula that you can eat and drink, this is definitely that. I don't think I've ever tried a liquid lipstick that is so long lasting. So this shade is a really pretty orangey red that I think will be one of the more popular shades. I know that the nude that I couldn't get was the first one to sell out in my local Mac store. So I don't know if that's a kind of global thing, but I think the nude will be really popular as well. The next shade is Fashion Legacy, which is more of a true red. I always like to pick up a true red in a collection because you can't go wrong with a red lipstick. I did find that with this shade, it's very unforgiving. The formula is quite unforgiving. I found that it's quite easy to get on your teeth. And if you make a mistake, you kind of have to just go with it. When I applied this one, I sort of overdrew my lips a little bit. You can't 
backtrack. It's so hard to remove this formula that you kind of just have to go with it. So for this look, I had quite large lips accidentally. I do really like the shade though. It's a really pretty true red. And I found with this one, I didn't have to layer, just kind of one layer was enough. The next one is Dance With Me. And this is a really pretty dark red. I really like dark reds. I did find with this one that I had to reapply it twice. I find that what happens with the darker shades is that you're left with a sort of line around your lips, which looks really weird. So what I tend to do is just blot it with a tissue and then reapply and that's fine. It doesn't take up too much time. It looks much better once I put the second layer on. I really, really like this shade. But just so you know, these liquid lipsticks are impossible to remove. I found that the only way to remove them is with a cotton bud. Don't try and use a cotton pad. Don't try and cleanse your face because it will go all over your face and it won't come off easily. Use a cotton bud, dip it in waterproof eye makeup remover, or if you have a micellar water, although waterproof makeup remover is definitely better, and then just roll the cotton bud around your lips. And you've got to do that. I, I went through like five cotton buds per application. You just have to roll it with the wet side and then roll it with the dry side and the lipstick sort of crumbles off. But they're definitely hard to remove, so be prepared for that. And the problem with that, which I also found with the Hourglass liquid lipsticks, is that if it does wear off after like four or five hours of wearing it, you have to reapply it. You can't just let it fade like a normal lipstick and then go for something else. You're kind of stuck with it for the night. You can reapply these. I don't think they reapply as nicely as the Sephora lip creams or Kat Von D Everlasting lipsticks. They do get a little bit crumbly, a little bit dry and uncomfortable on the lips, but I think they last longer initially that if you're just going out for dinner, you might not even need to reapply them. The last shade is the one I'm wearing now, which is O oh Lady, and it's like a dark purple. I thought this looked really nice. I think there's a more purpley one in the collection as well, but this one's a bit more wearable. And again, I found because it's a darker shade, I did get that line around the edge. I had to blot and reapply, but once I'd applied it, I think it's a really nice kind of vampy, plummy color. I really like this one actually. It's a little bit different. Great for a night out. But because these dry down so matte and they're so easy to wear, I think you can definitely get away with wearing them during the day. If you're not one for matte lipsticks because you think they look too drying and too heavy, I think these would work great as a base as well, especially the nude one. If you apply this on your lips first and then apply a gloss on top, at least you know when the gloss fades, you'll still have color on your lips. And I think a thin layer of these would work good as a base on your lips. So I'm not sure what else there is to say. I've told you the price, how many color shades there are. I've shown you the ones that I bought. And at the moment, it still feels really comfortable on the lips. I'm gonna leave this one on all day and I'll add in the description box if anything drastic happens. I'm gonna try and eat lunch and dinner and stuff with it, but they feel comfortable on the lips. They don't feel too heavy like the hourglass ones. They don't feel too drying. They're not the best for reapplying. I love the packaging and they're a little bit too expensive. That's kind of all my opinions there. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'll link below the video that I watched because I always think it's good to get different reviews, different perspectives. And let me know if you guys have tried these and what you think of them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.